know those movies that start at the end of the story? First, there's some intriguing soundtrack, and then a gentle fade from black, and then like eight or ten seconds of some fantastic moment or epic scene that instantly makes you both impressed and just a little confused. Well, that's how this story begins, very near present day on the edge of this pristine alpine lake. And you're probably wondering about now, just how did we get here? Well, to make a long story short, our overlanding adventures really started in 2014 when we bought a brand new Forerunner to explore the New Mexico backcountry in. Our daughter Caroline was only 14 months old and our new ride, now named Silver, had less than 200 miles on the odometer when we first hit the trails and began adding scratches down our sides. Our camping kit consisted of a Coleman tent, an air mattress, and a couple totes full of kitchen gear and food. It was all we needed for our short adventures and we had an incredible time exploring the Guadalupe Mountains of southern New Mexico with our off-road club made up of co-workers turned friends since we'd all left our family and friends back east when we moved to New Mexico for the project we were all working on. As with most people who dipped their toes into the overlanding world, we soon grew weary of the packing and unpacking that ate up precious trail time, pushed patience to the edge, and caused frustrations with each new piece of gear when you had to rearrange everything for it to fit. We knew we were in love with this pastime, with the exception of the constant game of Tetris to fit all of our gear. So, in 2016, we took a big leap and invested in a turtleback trailer. This new format allowed us to pack it to the gills with camping gear, clothes, food, and water, and then leave at a moment's notice because it was always ready to go. Soon, we were answering the call of the wild more and more often due to how easy the trip preparation had become. Not to mention the fact there were now added comforts we could bring along, which made Mama and Baby Bear very happy. With life in the wilderness becoming easier and more familiar, we hatched an idea to create a mostly unpaved route from our stomping grounds in the Guadalupes all the way north to Rocky Mountain National Park in Colorado. After months of research and route planning, we struck out on a 10-day adventure with a new camera in hand. The idea was to film the trip so that we could share the adventure with our family back in Tennessee and also have something so that three-year-old Caroline could re-watch it one day when she was older. After our incredible journey, we shared those videos on YouTube but it wasn't just our family who found it. Soon, we watched in amazement as thousands of people stumbled upon our adventure and before long, our channel was growing by leaps and bounds with people asking for more and more adventures. And by now, we had fallen head over heels in love with the pastime and the trailer, so much so that when my job came to an end in New Mexico, I left my successful construction and project management career and went to work for Turtleback as their operations manager. While we were there, our family poured heart and soul into the organization, implementing procedures, programs, and quality control methods as the business shifted from a boutique one-at-a-time shop to a more organized manufacturer. It really was an awesome time working with a great team of passionate individuals who soon became friends. We were able to take the next models to a whole new level from ideas that we had picked up on the trail. But there was one glaring problem with the occupation. With all the time we were spending designing, building, and expanding the company, I quickly lost sight of our own passions and found our family drifting apart as stress levels began to rise from all the unhealthy work hours. And so, enough was enough. While our time at Turtleback had been a fantastic experience for the most part, we were beginning to find roadblocks in the way of our vision for its future and decided to shift gears and refocus on our own passion, overland travel and storytelling. But this time, there would be no half measures. We sold nearly all of our possessions and our home, which was a fifth wheel camper that we had renovated, and then hit the road in a brand new 2018 Turtleback. The primary goal was this, to disengage with the rat race for a while, reinvest time in our family, and then share our stories with a steadily growing audience. And so we said goodbye to friends and family, made our way to the Gulf Coast, and kicked off one of our biggest adventures yet, as we pointed our rig north for the Arctic coast. While it was a bit scary, we knew that in a worst case scenario, we would simply run out of travel funds and then head back to work in the construction world with a pocket full of memories from an epic adventure, which to be honest, was a fairly acceptable downside. But as it turns out, 
not only was this epic trip just what our family needed, it also struck a chord with many thousands of others who tuned in and began to ride along every Thursday night as our little family of overlanders explored some of the most remote trails in North America and overcame challenge after challenge while on the road. After returning south from our Arctic explorations, we took some time to visit family and hatch a plan for the next leg of our travels. This time, using a Class A motorhome as a mobile base where we could range out for weeks at a time in our forerunner and trailer, then return to base camp for editing, laundry, and rest since this was now our full-time occupation. Then, just as we had everything ready to roll out, disaster struck in our brand new mobile base camp, self-destructed with an incredible roof failure that flooded the ceiling and made living inside impossible with the damage and subsequent mold that permeated the ductwork. We literally went from being on cloud nine to some personal low points as our dream not only came crashing down, but we were forced into legal action, which quickly scarfed up our operating funds. And so we struck out again, back to New Mexico to my old job site, where thankfully they needed some consultant work and began to slowly rebuild our dream. I'm glad to say that after three years of legal effort, we are now untangled from the Class A mess. But folks, I'd be lying if I said it wasn't some dark times for our family. But we kept praying and plugging along as we continued to work full-time at a day job and spend late nights and weekends traveling, editing, and keeping Lifestyle Overland on life support. But instead of a fancy Class A motorhome we were enjoying just weeks before, now we were in an old double-wide trailer, which was home to its own collection of wildlife. We slept in the floor on our mattress from our rooftop tent and cooked with our kitchen kit from the turtleback. But slowly, very slowly, we began to rebuild. With only one vehicle, Sarah was stuck at home while I was at work. And so once we finally got some breathing room, we added another member to the family a used Lexus GX460. We had been dreaming and drooling over this platform for a few years and knew that one day, Silver, who has been road hard and put up wet for most of her career, would eventually need someone to share the chores with. Honestly, we could not have picked a better ride to expand our capabilities, and with the help of several awesome companies who leapt at the chance to build something with us, we had a totally outfitted weapon for the trails. When the pandemic hit, we, along with most all YouTube creators, found a huge influx of viewers as people were looking for ways to escape both physically and mentally from the new social restrictions that rocked all of our worlds. And so, we did something different. We left the trailer behind and struck out with our pair of trusty steeds on a month-long adventure, exploring and mapping out a new trail system now known as the High Country Trail. While that series had a few scratching their heads and wondering if there was trouble in paradise, the simple fact of the matter was that Aspen, as our GX460 is now known, was Sarah's pride and joy, and she wanted to experience it. On the other side, I've been mostly a passenger for the past couple of years since it was my job to run the cameras, so I was ready for the driver's seat myself. This turned out to be an awesome configuration, especially with the world in turmoil, since now we had two reliable rigs to help us overcome obstacles or one to run into town for parts for the other if it needed help. Oh, and by the way, just so you know, neither one of them ever broke down. Then in late 2020, we took our dual rig combo into Southern Utah and inadvertently changed our lives forever. While we've seen a lot of North America by now, we fell completely in love with the wild and diverse landscape in this country. And it wasn't long before we were both resolved to relocate here. And so just a couple months after that trip, we leased a house smack dab in the middle of this adventure land and began devouring trails faster than we ever had. It seemed like every bend in the road had some new fantastic landscape to see, and we knew we'd struck overland gold. At about this time, we heard that Turtleback had changed ownership and the new owners wanted to work with us again. When they asked what we wanted to do, my response was easy. We wanted a base model getaway trailer. Are you sure, they asked? Don't you want a fresh flagship with all the bells and whistles? And I said no, because this model was one of our dreams while we were working there, and we begged and pleaded with the owner at the time to create a base model utility trailer with the legendary quality of Turtleback that could be had for an affordable price and then outfitted with the modular bells and whistles as a family grew and had the available funds. And so, we transitioned our kit yet again to a utilitarian configuration 
with the all too familiar tote organization we had used years before with the intent to tell a new kind of story. This also gave us the chance to test and review a wide range of camping gear, which made every trip fun and interesting as we played with all kinds of camping toys. But sadly, the story never moved further than that. With Turtleback's focus on their flagship to meet COVID demands, the modular upgrades were never developed for the inexpensive getaway. Then one day, Turtleback suddenly closed its doors and all production halted, sealing the getaway's fate and soundly closing the door on that chapter of our travels. While we were contemplating what would be next for the Lifestyle Overland family, a series of events took place that would change everything. So, our family travels for many reasons. We love the freedom, discovery, beauty, challenges, excitement, curiosity, and all the emotions that overlanding evokes within us. But if we're putting it all on the table, we also travel to escape stress, ever-present health struggles, and painful memories. What we rarely share in our stories is the burden of loss. And not because we're trying to make things look better than they are, but because there are some things that are best shared around a campfire with trusted friends and family. There's enough sadness in this world to go around, and we want our story to generally be a beacon of positivity. But from time to time, there's a moment where sharing inner turmoil is important. What many of you don't know is that we had a series of difficult losses back to back, which played a huge role in our decision to go on the road back in 2018. A couple of years before then, Sarah and I both lost close family members, which shook our world to its core. But added to that, and even more painful, is the fact that every time we look in the rearview mirror, there are two empty seats in our rigs for two babies that we lost to miscarriage after Caroline. As many of you know all too well, these kinds of losses can cast a lifelong shadow on your heart. And so, in its own way, travel has been both a distraction for a time, but also an opportunity to slowly process those losses. We had honestly given up on growing our family. Multiple tests and doctors cast doubts on that possibility for several years, and we'd almost shut the door on it ourselves when someone who had bigger plans and dreams than we could ever imagine blessed us with another beautiful, healthy little girl named Abigail. Needless to say, <laughs> we're beyond joyful with our new little ray of sunshine, and we're so thankful that she's part of the adventure now. But then the next question came as reality settled in. What would travel be like with an infant? It's been 10 years since we did this, and we'd forgotten a lot about how much effort a baby takes to raise, much less how much effort it takes doing it on the move in the wilderness. And so, at three months old, we set out again with our new little adventurer to see what she thought of life in the wild. Turns out, we probably bit off more than we could chew. She wasn't a fan of the new environment at first and let us know in great detail how displeased she was. With Mama Bear dealing with a squalling baby, it put a damper on the dinner preparations. And you could pretty much forget filming anything with the soundtrack coming from the tent. I don't think we ate dinner until nearly 11 p.m. that night, though it wouldn't have mattered since no one was really going to get any sleep anyhow. It's safe to say that Sarah and I had some serious discussions following that trip, and it wasn't long before another miracle began to play out that would again change our course for the better. We met the Nuttall family at Overland Expo East back in 2020. They'd been big fans of the channel for years, and we quickly struck up a relationship. At some point, Artie said he would love for us to come take a look at a trailer they were developing since we've been around the block when it comes to overland trailers. Well, to make this long, short story shorter, it blew our minds. I honestly hadn't been that impressed with an overland trailer since 2015 when I first stumbled upon Turtleback at Overland Expo West. As many of you probably know from our podcast conversations, Sarah has always dreamed of a sleep inside trailer, so she was a bit smitten with its format herself. But little did she know that a couple short years later, we would be staring at each other through bloodshot eyes, thinking the same thing. We're going to need a bigger boat. That morning, as we sipped our coffee after a sleepless night at camp, surrounded by our chaotic collection of camping gear, she said, Kevin, I think it's time you give Artie and Stacy a call. As you've seen in the past several episodes, we borrowed Artie and Stacy's Voyager trailer a couple of times to see how it would fit our travel style and family dynamic. Needless to say, 
Sarah was in love right from the start, especially with a kitchen that's set up in about 30 seconds. That alone was a lifesaver, but having a warm, secure, quiet cabin for the baby had us all over the moon. And if you've watched those episodes, you've already seen some of the permagrant effects it has on us. Now, while it was a home run right from the start, if you know me, you know I can't help but spin up and kick around ideas, especially when it comes to Overland gear. Some of them are simple, clean cut, and achievable adjustments. Others are huge tasks that require more than a little engineering to bring to life. It turns out that Artie is cut from that same cloth, and our friendship quickly became a whirlwind of creativity and spreadsheets filled with ideas that, when properly distilled thanks to the realistic approach from our loving wives, netted some incredible changes to their 2024 design that, if I do say so myself, is going to rock the Overland trailer world. And that is where this new chapter of the Lifestyle Overland story begins in the shop of Expedition Trailers, where a crew of awesome individuals have been working hard to build yet another masterpiece while bringing several new ideas to life in our very own 2024 Voyager. Speaking of ideas, how do you like our wrap? We ask for Rocky Mountains, a splash of LSO orange, and an aspen grove. This is what their graphic designer Jamie whipped up for us. I think she absolutely nailed it. All right, howdy folks, and welcome to another episode of Lifestyle, Lifestyle Overland. Overland. And today we're on a father-daughter run here in North Salt Lake City to pick up the future. Sarah and Abigail are back at the Hacienda packing and prepping for Overland Expo Mountain West, which we're about to head to <laughs> as soon as we pick up this very special delivery. Now, Artie of Expedition Trailers tells me that our unit is almost ready, almost ready. So we're here to check on the progress and hopefully hitch up to our own Voyager trailer and begin the next chapter of Lifestyle Overland Adventures. That was pretty Thank good. You. All right, let's go see what they got going on inside. Let's yeah. do it. Mm -hmm. Oh, and by the way, we picked up some glass for this thing. So hopefully I can get that swapped out tonight because we got to leave. Early, early, early in the morning to head to Loveland, Colorado. How'd you get some sugar babies? Some sugar babies for the sugar baby. Here this, they are. Is this where they make those cool camping trucks? Yeah. <laughs> Just doing the VIN right now. All right. Good. Let's see. Got a hey. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Got a haircut. Yeah. Yeah. When did you get a cut? I think. How's it going? Hey. Hi. Okay, you can see it from here. Oh, man. Here we go. <laughs> 
This kind of looks like a like the old shop. Yeah. How's it going? Hey. How's it going? It's going. Getting better every minute. <laughs> oh, hey. my. That's so cool. What do you think? I like it a lot. Yeah. Um, this is gonna be nice. Yeah. <laughs> go, go take a peek. That's just for you, by the way. I know. That's your little uh, hideaway. Yeah, that's for you. And now you can still talk to us, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so good. Awesome. That's nice. Uh, the cool right thing there. is you can just hook this ladder right up into here. All right. Okay. Like there you that. go. I like that. You just climb <laughs> right up in there. So this is like my room, right? This is your room, yeah. Okay, good. I'm not sure I can with you. And we'll have doors. So be two doors. Oh, so like, like this. Oh, like that. Like oh, that. that's nice. So they yeah. just like pop on out. Right? That's now, a proper YouTuber would have kept all this a secret and then built up to a big reveal before dropping some mind-blowing new vehicle or over-the-top gear to their audience. But this process has been a bit different since we've been actively working with Expedition Trailers on several different ideas and we've still got several more modifications coming up that will take it to a whole new level. But today, we're here to pick it up in its current configuration so we can show it off at Overland Expo Mountain West, which is kicking off in less than 24 hours from now. The rush to completion for this stage was exciting though, and like Caroline mentioned before, it brought back memories of working in the old turtleback shop. It honestly felt good to be working with the team again on something as incredible as this trailer. You're not helping matters. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well they're getting really close. They have a very intensive QC process that they're working through right now. so. Artie's going to grab the tablet and kind of show me all the different checks that they make, all the photographs that they take just to show to, for themselves and for their customers. They did indeed go through all the QC steps to make sure that everything is spot on for the customers. So it's pretty doggone impressive. So how's the, how's the QC process going? Well, pretty good. Just looking over that everything has been checked and looking good. Looks like they're Putting in a few things. So they have an app on their phone. Yeah. And it's updating to the system. Yeah, so what? yeah, everyone has this app that uh, is able to look at through all the different items for each trailer. And there's actually, I'll square to the ball at bottom here. Oh my God. It's pretty, <laughs> yeah, so we've got, you know, 144 items that we're checking over and looking through everything and verifying, you know, from suspension to, you know, items in the kitchen, right? Lighting, interior, heat, electrical, tires, right? Making sure those, those tires are torqued to spec yeah. before it leaves. So everything. many right. components to, to ensure yeah. are like it's ready awesome. to go. Right. Yeah. 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 That's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So. Yeah, so we know the state of every trailer as soon as it, you know, when it leaves. Goes out the door. Awesome. That's a huge peace of mind for you as a manufacturer, but also for the customer just to know, like, they're not going to get down the road and the tire falls off because, oops, yeah. we forgot. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, I mean, it doesn't by any means make us perfect. Sure. But it really takes a lot of that human element out of it. The oops, Absolutely. right? Because there's, there's uh, you know, an account. Yeah. Right, right. And we can see who did it, yeah. and the time, the date, right. Everything's time stamped. So, so this is like what I did in the nuclear industry. There you go. <laughs> you know, yeah. this is next yeah. level. Awesome. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. Gone. Good. Okay. There you All go. Right, man. Appreciate y'all. Yeah, of course. Thank y'all. Great working with you. Can't wait to get it out there. Yeah, dude, that'd be <laughs> awesome. Do you want a video of it coming out of the garage? Yeah. Yeah, I got it. Yeah.
Oh my gosh, look at this thing. This is nuts. Wow. Whew. Awesome job, guys. Awesome. Man. Artie. You outdid stuff, yourself. Man. That's exciting. I'm glad we could pull it off. Oh man, just in time, just in time for the show. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Thank you. Thank Absolutely. You. Absolutely. Now I get to Our take pleasure. it home and uh, surprise Sarah now. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> honey, I bought something. Yeah. Hey, honey. <laughs> it followed me home. Yeah. <laughs> man. All right. Well, whole new chapter. After wrapping up all the QC checks and tidying up any loose ends, it was time to hitch up and take this beauty home for Sarah to see. While I had seen mock-ups and sneak peeks of this wrap, it simply did not do it justice for what it looks like in person. I cannot wait to camp in the middle of an aspen grove with this bad boy. Artie, Stacy, and the whole Expedition Trailers team, thank you all so much for knocking this Voyager out of the park. And now, let's hurry back to base camp and see what Sarah thinks about it before we have to hit the road again for another expo. All right, well, a <laughs> long day, but we're here to show Mama Bear the next chapter. I know you've seen sneak peeks already, but what do you think? It's totally different in person. Is it? Oh yeah. Yeah. I love the orange. What do you think? Is that cool? Do you like that? Oh, and it's got the pitches this time. Yeah. Oh, the yeah, bridge cord is gone. I was waiting for you to notice that. Look oh, I this. did. So that's the little chain that it goes in. Nice. Yeah, so you don't have to fight the cable. Oh, and they give you a cutting board. Oh, the fridge is... This looks so good. Right? And it like, it's seamless. And it just bookends with Aspen up front there. Yeah. So, here's something that I requested. Oh, for buggy buds. Oh, here. nice. Here. And down below, too. Yeah. Here. And there. Wow. Right? Yeah. Mmm. <laughs> All right, now for Abigail's domain. You want to go see where you go see? Open her up. Yeah, Abby, you can see that. Okay. Oh, my gosh. Isn't that awesome? You have a crib. I think you could just about sleep there. Yeah, really. If <laughs> it comes to worst, we'll just stick you right there. Hey. Just curl you up. So, up top is the secret weapon that we're gonna show off here in a minute. In a second, red right art panel in there. Then up here on the nose, we deleted the spare tire because we decided this is enough spare tire for the whole kit and instead moved the two 10 pound propane tanks that were blocking the view. Now you can see down the side of the trailer when you're towing it. And you can take 40, count them, 40 pounds of propane on your trip. Well, there's more that's gonna take place up here. This is prototype, this is stage one. We've got more ideas coming for up here. So you'll get to see this in several different iterations. And then up top, we've got the perch. So this seat right here oh, that's so nice. protects okay. that as you're going in and out of the tent, but then it makes for a beautiful seat you can take in the sunrise with. Wow. Yeah. That's a really nice touch.
storage for days and power plug right there so I can charge my DeWalt stuff. Uh. Yeah. So we'll do a, a fancier introduction later, but this is first looks. First looks and matching wheels oh. and tires. Yeah. Well, that's about all we have time for in this episode, folks. But obviously, this new chapter is just getting started. So tune in next time for more Lifestyle Overland shenanigans, chaos, and family adventures. But before we go, on behalf of myself, Sarah, Caroline, and Abigail, thank you to all our patrons, both past and present, who believed in us and kept this adventure alive through thick and thin during these past five years of our full-time content creation efforts. We seriously would not be here without you, and we can't wait to share the next leg of our journey with you in the passenger seats. Until next time, remember to stay curious and leave it better than you found it. Mm -hmm.